So Untitled 1984 really is a quintessential example of, of Keith Haring's work. It displays all the urgency of his graphic style that mirrors the sort of culture of the downtown New York scene in the 1980s. This painting is both incredibly engaging, it's humorous, it's comical at times, but also quite sinister and terrifying. So Keith Herring was uh, an artist who really came to the fore in the 1980s. Friends with artists like Kenny Scharf and uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat really sort of set the scene of that era and of the city. Herring's art was very much graffiti based. Earlier on in the decade, the singular figures of barking dogs or dancing men was very much the sort of one singular motif and his subway drawings became synonymous with him as an artist and indeed the sort of visual identity of, of, of the landscape of the city back then. 1984 really marked a change in Herring's work. In this painting and his best works of this period, you get this sort of cacophony of, of all these motifs that are so prominent within his work. So what's so wonderful about this painting? Um, Herring has utilised all the imagery and art historical references of yesteryear within his own very graphic, idiosyncratic style. Hieronymus Bosch springs to mind in his Garden of Earthly Delights, I and mean, even sort of Peter Bruegel the Elder, where you have these artists who are very in tune with religion and the foreboding notion of death, and that was very much intertwined in their paintings at the time. You know, these cascading figures really filling the canvas and falling to their sort of untimely demise. Herring really intertwined that in, into contemporary society, into the sort of pop culture of New York, the hip hop scene, and indeed the sort of apocryphal nature of um, the AIDS crisis at that time. You really get this sense of heaven and hell, the sort of rich tapestry of characters within it are so complex and it really makes you engage with the scene, looking for those uh, individual elements within it. You have in the upper register this sort of six-legged caterpillar figure to a winged donkey. Amid the chaos, you have the inimitable uh, dancing figure in this crimson ocean. And of course, the very central skeletal figure, which one can assume relates to this sort of theme of death and his sort of awareness of, of the AIDS crisis of the era that so tragically took his life at the beginning of the next decade. So this painting from 1984 really embodies Herring's world at that time. Life, death, religion. This is a painting that is completely engaging.